Okay, so I'm going to kick off DEF CON 16. Yeah! Right on. Crazy. And on time. No, I had to make it late. I had to make it late. Um, so it's a crazy year this year. We've got the whole space. You probably noticed that. Um, we've rearranged a couple of things to try to get some uh, better flow going on. And we spent a lot of time trying to come up with these really cool badges this year. For all those with the paper badges, they're not quite as cool, are they? <laughs> no, they're not. Um, but there's a story about it, so you can <laughs> take solace in hearing a really interesting story about the badges. <laughs> and Joe will give you all the nitty gritty details, but. Um, so the next 3,666 badges cleared customs through Alaska yesterday, and they'll, uh, they'll arrive here in uh, 20 minutes. <laughs> and so we'll be substituting out all the paper badges for uh, real badges. So once they're all in, we'll start making announcements, and people can get in the line and swap out the paper and get the real ones. And then tomorrow, another several thousand badges arrive, and then we'll have plenty of badges. And then the idea is, because every year Joe tries to get a badge hacking contest going and not everybody wants to beat up their badges. So we're going to have extras this year, we hope, and we'll sell them at the end of the con. And then you can beat those up and keep the other ones in pristine condition. Or maybe you can combine three of them into some kind of transformer-esque, you know, cyborg. But you'll figure something out. And then when you come next year, you're going to have uh, some pretty crazy creations that we'll show off. And um, I don't know if I should tell them, should I? Secret. Okay, okay. You'll, they'll figure it out, though, because they're smart. Um, <laughs> and then we also have uh, the guy from War Games. If you didn't follow this on the forums, um, Lightman, the character that the Lightman character was modeled after of in War Games, is here. Um, and we're going to be screening War Games tonight. And then afterward, we can pick the brain of the guy that the hacker was modeled after. And uh, he's a pretty interesting character. So. He'll be there. If you run out and buy copies of the DVD, I'm sure he'll sign them for you. We've got a fantastic lineup. We've got a network, double the bandwidth. We're at 20 megabits this year. And uh, if you try to put up an SSID of uh, DEF CON, I think we'll uh, DOS your machine. Store your MAC address and destroy it for the rest of the weekend. So uh, don't do that. Um, We've got this really cool chill out lounge, which is new. It's where the black and white ball was last time. But this time, we've paid a designing lighter to come in, set up all this really cool lighting effects. We've turned it into a chill out lounge, which should run between now and the end of the con. Uh, we've got Wi Fi in there. Now, it's the only place at the con you're going to see a Wi Fi access point called Warzone. If you connect to Warzone, you are allowed to connect to anybody else assigned to that access point. So if you want to trade your zero day Juarez, you can do it on the war zone, but also know that other people can attack and scan you there as well. Otherwise, if you stay on the DEF CON access point, um, the way the firewall rules are set up, you won't be able to talk or see any other attendee. You'll only be able to talk to the gateway. So that's how we try to get a little bit more security. What else we got going on? I'm going to hand it off to Kingpin, Joe Grand, a.k.a. <laughs> but you have to, first I have to call your phone. <laughs> oh, I just turned it off. No, no, I gotta call your phone. I better turn it back on. Oh, yeah, turn your phone back on. And um, Joe can finally talk about his secret project. If you were at the closing ceremonies last year, I accidentally let the cat out of the bag. Sort of. I sort of let the cat. They're not allowed to blog. Wait, these guys are not allowed to blog about it if we talk about it right now. <laughs> what? <laughs> Control. Okay, okay. They can publish anything that's available on the internet. Right you, you can publish anything that's on the interwebs. Okay, I'm calling Joe right now. Okay, this is what his phone sounds like. When it rings. Come on. You've reached Joe Grant? No, that's not what it says. Your phone didn't ring. No, now it's on. Oh. <laughs> There's some network latencies. This is how I'm going to introduce him. It's good. Verizon. I'm Joe Grand, aka Kingpin. Just like badges, I'll make your head spin. Back up, bitches, I'm far from soft. I hang on out a poet, I represent law. That's the, the winning badges song from last year. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Kingpin that's going to tell you the long and tortured story of last year to this year. <laughs> oh, man. All right. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Woo! 
My name is Joe Grand, a.k.a. Kingpin. Um, that's me on the screen, but can we put the slides up, please? It's probably more interesting to look at those. That's good. There we go. All right. Um, we had 1,000 badges, 1,000 human badges arrive yesterday, and there's 1,000 of you guys that have them. Everyone else has the pretty-looking lime-colored badge. I'll explain that problem later, but you will get real badges. Um, I'm going to get just right into the details of making this badge. Um, I don't know. I haven't actually gone through these slides yet, so I'll just kind of make it up as I go along. Um, all right, so the process, like last year, we wanted to make something that was cool and hackable. Um, you know, this one has some bling. You guys can add your own bling. But uh, really just do something that, that would get people excited about modifying hardware, about playing with their badges, whether they're, they're attacking the, the firmware side, whether they're adding shit to the front, whatever it is, we wanted to just do something. Um, I felt last year was a little over-engineered. I had a lot of functionality in there that nobody ever took advantage of, things like the optional accelerometer, the optional wireless interface. A lot of you guys went and got components for me, and nobody did anything with them. So... Boo. Lost said he did, but I haven't seen it yet. Next year, yeah. <laughs> Two years later, we'll see something. Um, anyway, so that was a lot of work on my part for no real benefit in the badge hacking contest, so I wanted to make it more simple, um, where people can just look at the badge. There's minimal components, but there's a lot you can do. So that was the intent. Um, this is the, uh, my first sketch. Let's see, January, February, March. April 14th of 2008 is uh, when we first started discussing this badge. After all the problems we've been through this year, it's going to be uh, January 2009 when we start this time, I think. If not, like next Monday. <laughs> um, so this year, I have a microprocessor. It's a Freescale JM60. I'll get into all the details. It's another low-end, low, low low-cost 8-bit micro. Um, let's see, you got a secure digital card socket, some LEDs. The red LEDs were left over from last year's badges. I had like 700,000 left over or something, so. <laughs> and I still have a few thousand more if people want to play with them. Um, I have a infrared transmitter, infrared receiver, and a, I don't know, some other stuff. So that's basically the first drawing I put together, kind of high-level conceptual drawing. Here's some details in case you guys couldn't figure it out. The little ninja eye is the infrared transmitter. Infrared receiver, LEDs, blinky lights. You've got to have blinky lights because people like those. And I wanted the badge to do something if there was, like, you know, nobody actually wanted to mess around with the badge. At least it would flash lights like Knight Rider. Um, so, yeah, on the back side, there's some stuff. I have uh, some new things I added this year. Last year and the year before, um, the only way that you could add new firmware to the badge and program and debug the badge was through the actual, um, uh, like, proprietary programming or debugging interface. So two years ago, DEF CON 14, I used a microchip pick part, so you needed to have the MP Lab um, ICD2 debugger. Uh, we had a few of those, but it was sort of a pain for all the people that wanted to participate. Uh, and then last year, we had the Freescale QG8 part, and I had this BDM connector, which was their standard for programming and for debugging um, through Code Warrior, the six-pin header, but you still needed specialized hardware. So that was sort of a pain. Um, we only had a few programmers that we could give away. So this year I added a uh, bootloader. And um, through the mini USB port, you can run a GUI on your PC only, sorry. And uh, load firmware directly through your bootloader onto the badge with no specialized hardware. <laughs> so now, now no one has any excuses. Um, it's also, uh, that USB port also serves as a debug connector, and I'll, uh, I'll get to that later. Here are the iterations of going through the process. Right after I did the block diagram, and I talked with Freescale and said, all right, what part do you guys want to show off? Because they've been really helpful with the, uh, the DEF CON badges. One of the guys is actually going to be in the hardware hacking village, one of the product managers for Freescale, giving technical support about the badge, giving out some swag. Um, they've been super cool last year and this year as far as like just giving support and helping us um, get parts that are affordable. So I went to them and said, okay, what, uh, what part do you guys want to show off? And they said, well, we just have this new Flexus 9S08 JM60 part. It's really cool. Um, it was a little bit expensive. I'm like, well, it's a little too expensive for us. Can you give us a discount? And they said, sure. 
So they sent us 8,500 parts at a gigantic discount. Um, so I used that part. Uh, so the first thing I did is using their just off the shelf development board, this thing called the Demo JM. Uh, just got like the basic firmware stuff set up, added on the SD card connector, and just made sure that just the basic functionality would work. And then after that, I just developed um, a custom board with only the specific hardware that I wanted to have on the badge. So removing a lot of stuff from the development board that I didn't need. And uh, I finished all of my firmware design and, and everything on that little uh, demo board and then went to the final badges. So I do have a few of those um, bare boards with no parts on them upstairs and I'll, I'll carry a few around if, in case you guys want them to like mess around with sort of cool collector's items. Uh, all right, schematic, it's impossible to see. <laughs> but uh, trust me, it's cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, all of this stuff, by the way, is on the DEF CON CD, the schematics, the build materials, the firmware, um, Freescale, uh, all the, uh, the, the code warrior development tools. I'll get to everything, but yeah, for everything you need is on that CD. Uh, build of materials, so there's quite a few parts. Most of them are just discretes, um, a lot of resistors and, and LEDs. This is the first drawing I got back from the dark tangent uh, when we started designing the badge and they said, make something that looks like this. And I said, okay. Uh, the one thing I like about working with these guys is the dark tangent is, uh, and Ping are artists. They're artisans. And um, they don't make PC boards. So when they say make a PC board that looks like this, they're saying it because it looks cool and they want to make the badge look cool. So it pushes me to try PC board fabrication techniques and manufacturing techniques that just haven't really been done before. So, you know, detailed cutouts, um, uh, routing over solder mask, and just crazy, crazy stuff um, that, you know, it's kind of fun. So it pushes, you know, they push me to try new things. And that's why every year we just try to make the badge look cooler and cooler, which is fun. So they came back and said, here's, here's what we want to look like. And then it was a back and forth of like, well, we can do the background and the solder mask. We could have the ninja's face be silk screened and uh, stuff like that. This is what the final PC board layout looked like front and back. I don't know, just kind of cool looking. Um, assembly drawings. If you're hacking the badge, you'll probably want these. And these are also on the CD. Um, as you can tell on the back, there's no part designators. I left everything off because I just thought it would look really ugly if there was part designators all over the board. So if you are hacking the badge and you want to know what's what um, and what you're tampering with, you'll need the assembly drawings. So after some firmware development, which I get to firmware next, um, designed the board, which took forever, hand routed everything, and the prototypes arrived in mid-June, so we were still on schedule. It was like, all right, cool, the boards look good, no mess ups. Uh, and I had everything done in the same color because it was uh, cheaper and quicker. And this was the yellow with the red um, silk screen, which was the contest badge, and we'd never seen yellow circuit boards before. Um, I personally think they look really ugly. Uh, so sorry to all the contest goons that have them. But, but that's part of trying stuff that's never been done before and just experimenting and, you know, I don't know, some people like them. Uh, the first few boards, I had to build two of them, as you'll see, because there's some functionality in there that requires two badges. So hand built two of them uh, all by myself. It was really fun. Um, I don't know, I just scanned that in. That's like a to-do list of all the stuff that I had to do. <laughs> um, all right, so some of you guys might be wondering like why there's this gigantic battery on the back. Uh, this was a, a big problem. Dark DT and I spent, I don't know how many hours on the phone discussing battery chemistry. And I don't know how many of you guys have done that before, but it's a thrilling conversation. <laughs> <laughs> So um, if you remember last year I used two uh, lithium coin cells, the CR2032s, um, which are cool because they're really small, but they're not cool because they don't like how high power consumption. Anything above like 10 milliamps, these things just start sagging really badly. Uh, of course, I didn't do all of my power measurements and calculations beforehand last year, and uh, the badges for people that were using them all the time didn't even last the weekend. So I was pretty bummed about that, and a lot of people were walking around like, how come my badge doesn't work? And I guess the batteries were dead. But it's funny because for everything else, any other electronic product you have, if something stops working, you always check the batteries. But here, everyone's like just pushing on it and like, what's wrong with my badge? At a hacker conference, no one figured it out. <laughs> so I didn't tell them. But uh, yeah, that's the reason. So check your batteries from last year. 
Um, anyway, so I wanted to do something that, that would last the entire conference, if not more. And um, the functionality that we were adding to the badge this year required a larger battery. Because we have secure digital, um, SD cards are notoriously unpredictable for the amount of current that they draw. Uh, and that's just based on how old they are. The newer ones draw less power, but it's just one of those things you can't control. It's out of our hands because it's different manufacturers, different parts. Um, so we needed something like the max was 300 milliamp for reading and writing an SD card. So I needed to be able to support that in case someone put one in. Um, the weight was also an issue. Uh, we had a choice between, at this point, between a, CR one, a CR123A and three AAA batteries. <laughs> Those weigh a lot. Um, I wanted to try to do it with one AAA, which would have been really cool, but uh, with the boost converters I looked at, they just couldn't still handle that high peak requirement of current. Uh, and then it would add a lot more parts, a lot more complexity. And I wanted to just do it as simple as possible, one battery with no linear regulator, no protection at all. Um, so make sure you plug it in the right way. And someone actually came running up to me yesterday, and they're like, oh, I just burned my hand. I put the battery in backwards. I'm like, well, there's a little indicator on the battery holder to put it in the right way. That sounds like user error. <laughs> so he got no sympathy. Um, anyway, I, the, it was either three AAA batteries or, or one CR123A. Um, and believe it or not, we actually settled on the three AAA batteries first. And that's why if you look, the, uh, the components are sort of in this triangle because I was going to have three AAA batteries in a triangle and then put all the circuitry inside. Um, and that was because the, it was actually cheaper to get three AAA batteries. Um, oh, someone's calling me. I forgot to turn my phone back off. Okay, this is really going to suck. This is my wife who's pregnant at home, and so that's why she's not here. Everyone say hi to Keely. Hi, <laughs> Hi. She says hi. <laughs> um, I'll call you back. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I think that happens every year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to turn my phone off. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Um, okay, so, geez, where was I? Oh, yeah, okay, three batteries. So we're going to do that um, and have a linear regulator in there because I thought that the CR123A was just too big. Um, but when I started to look around and try to buy 20, 26,000 AAA battery holders, the manufacturer was like, yeah, we'll get back to you in three months. So I couldn't find stock, and then we ended up settling on the CR123A, which I think is a better choice anyway. Um, it's lighter, it costs 77 cents. It's a little bit bigger, but it will last forever, and um, they're still pretty common, and I thought it would like interfere with uh, bouncing around, but I think it's totally fine. So anyway, we ended up with that battery. And I took some current measurements just to, to show that uh, it would last a long time, and the slide's hard to see because I wrote it by hand. But um, it, it, on average, when you're transmitting, it's like 27 milliamps. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's like 9 milliamps. If you plug in USB, I automatically clock up the processor to 48 megahertz, and it's a little bit more. But this battery is good. Um, the dev environment for this year is Freescale Codeware 6.1 for MCUs. Um, if you have the tools loaded from last year, I'm pretty sure you can use those. That was like version 5.5. Um, but Freescale was cool enough this year to give us the professional edition, um, which is the full un uncrippled version, 60K of flash support, which is what these processors do. Um, valid through August 20th, 2008, which is well, well enough for the DEF CON uh, badge hacking contest. And uh, their free version is available that supports up to 32K of max code. So. Uh, anyway, the version they gave us is 2,000 bucks uh, normally, so that's pretty nice of them. Yeah, you can clap if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Freescale. Um, so just a little, a little hardware background on, on some of the stuff that this supports. Infrared, if you haven't noticed, the Ninja Eye is infrared. That's why it doesn't turn on. You can't really see it. You can see it with some cameras. And uh, I, have, I have something I want to try for the award ceremony if, if, uh, if I uh, get, the, get the nerve to do it. Um, anyway, so infrared, I don't know how well you can see that top slide, but one of the things I did, I had no idea about how to develop infrared at all. I'd never used infrared um, for any sort of file transfer, data transfer, universal remote controls use them, TV remote controls use them, all sorts of stuff. 
for those of you that attended uh, Major Malfunction's talk uh, last year, I think, hotel systems use infrared. So we thought it would be cool to have that a, a, as part of the badge. Um, and I'll get to what it actually does later. But what I'm doing, the first thing I want to do is just make sure that the infrared circuitry that I designed worked. So I was like, all right, I'll try to just turn off my Sony TV because the Sony TV power off codes are, are easily accessible and that would be a good, just a good exercise. Um, the way it works is I'm generating a 38 kilohertz carrier through uh, one of the timer PW, T, PWM modules. So that's all in hardware. And I'm just turning on and off that carrier to meet the spec. Uh, and like the Sony spec is, let me see in the next slide. It's like 1.2 milliseconds um, on and or 1. Point, yeah, 1.2 milliseconds on and like 0.6 milliseconds off for one and then it's 0.6 on and off for a zero or something like that. It's in the code. Um, but you're basically just turning on the, the carrier when you want it and turning it off when you want it. And um, that's what the Sony TV power off code looks like. And it ended up working fine and I could run around the house and like turn off, the t turn off my TV, which is really cool. Um, and then I thought about, you know, we're having this SD card socket on there and I haven't said what, it, what it's about yet, but it requires an SD card if you want to actually do anything. So I'm like, all right, we have infrared, um, but what if people don't want to bring an SD card? What if they don't, you know, read the forums to, to know they have to bring one? I decided to just add some basic functionality to the badge. Um, so if you don't have an SD card, you can still use your infrared for something. Um, and that is this. The TV be gone. <laughs> Suitable for a hacker conference, I think. Um, the original TV Be Gone product was designed by a friend of mine, Mitch Altman, who m maybe is here, I'm not sure. Um, and he's been selling tons of these things and he just released an open source version of, the, of, the, of his product. So it's a little bit of, it's a kit, you can build it up and load in all the code with all the uh, power off codes. Turn off TVs all over North America and Asia. And in Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, right, for those of you that, uh, that heard about the CES, Thing with the who what did Gizmodo? I don't I don't remember who went there. The Giz, Gizmodo guys went there and turned off all the TVs and like really messed with people. Um, that was the TV be gone. I think that that was really mean, by the way. But I feel really bad for all those booth babes. <laughs> um, so what I did is I, I took his open source code. I took his um, all of the defines for the TV power off codes, moved those over into my source tree, and then just created the, the, uh, the code for the JM60 to handle, go through them all, and turn off all the TVs. So I just thought that would be a fun thing to do, um, you know, for people to mess around with stuff. The IR LED that I picked on here is a, it's a high power, but it's a low beam width, because I want, I didn't, for the, for the actual f file transfer, which is what the badge was designed to do. Um, I didn't want to have it interfere with other people's transmission, so it's very narrow. Um, if you want to use it in TV be gone mode for anything further than like three feet away from a TV, um, which you'd probably get in trouble for if you're standing there like this, um, you can put on like a, a, a high brightness, um, widely dispersed infrared LED. You can go to Fry's and get one or something. So I expect to see some of those by the end of the weekend. Oh yeah, okay, so the Hardware Hacking Village has some infrared LED transmitters, emitters, okay. They have about 100 um, infrared LEDs in the Hardware Hacking Village. Find Lost, the guy with, with the blue hair and the sexy smile. <laughs> um, all right, so. This video is a demonstration. Ignore that. You don't want to hear that, it's really bad. Um, so now I got infrared working, I could turn off TVs. Um, what we wanted to do next was transfer files. Um, something that, that, that DT had a really good point about when we were trying to figure out what we wanted to do for the badge is make it so people can customize it in some way. You know, last year we had the scrolling text message. That was cool. Um, so we wanted to do something like that where people can, uh, you know, make it their own. So this year we have the infrared file transfer mode and I'll get into more details in a few slides, but the first step since I knew I had to transfer data was figure out a way to do it. Um, and I basically just took the Sony protocol for the, uh, for this really slow remote control and made it send data instead. So there's an example of it. Um, the oscilloscope was measuring the, the bytes as they went by and displaying stuff on hyperterminal, just sending stuff serially, uh, through the infrared. So that's, that's that. But to send files is a lot different. Um, because you need a lot of overhead structure to make sure you got your file size right, your file name right. 
Um, error checking if, you, uh, if you're skilled enough to implement that, which I'm not. Um, so I needed a way to design the rest of the system, the SD cards side of things, to be able to read the SD cards, which is going to have the file that you want to transmit. Um, luckily, Freescale had designed some sample code, which I took uh, and modified to read your digital cards and also read the FAT file system because you can read SD cards and that's fairly easy. It's just a standard SPI interface. It's a serial interface. Very easy to read read the card, like the, the actual data on the card, but to have it interface with PCs and with Macs, you got to have the FAT file system on it and that is a complete pain in the ass. So I worked with Freescale um, using their de development code and then just went back and forth with them to kind of tweak everything to get it working. Uh, so now SD cards have full FAT16 support, not FAT12. That's why the cards have to be greater than 32 megs. Um, and what you do is you take your SD card, you load your file um, that you want to transmit onto the card. You set it as read only. That way the badge will know that that's the file you want to transmit and not a file that you've received from someone else. And then you uh, walk up to someone and transmit it. And I'll get into the more details later, but this is the uh, this is what the file transfer thing looks like. A uh, decrement and turn off one by one. I can say that stuff. So it's a little hard to see, but you take one badge, you turn it into receive mode, which is that the first mode with the LEDs going back and forth like Knight Rider, because I love David Hasselhoff <laughs> and Kit. Um, so one badge is in receive mode. You have your SD card in there. The other badge you set to transmit mode, which is the second mode, where you have your LEDs sort of like Star Trek or something. I don't even know some space movie. Like every space movie has LEDs like that. Um, you hold your badges near each other and the data transfer will happen. Um, first, you, sir, first we're sending the file name and the file size. And this is like a totally budget file transfer protocol because I'm not a software guy at all. Um, sends a file name, file size, and uh, just starts serially transmitting data. 771 bits a second. Whopping speed. For those of you who remember acoustic couplers, anybody? It's like that. In the air, in the air checking is just as bad. <laughs> um, there's a CRC sent every 512 bytes because the 512 bytes is the block size for the SD card. So I figure I'll just read the entire block, send it, and then do a CRC check on it. And uh, if it matches good, if not, it just aborts the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> And you'll know that because the LEDs like alternate in a pattern and then the thing goes to sleep. <laughs> so maybe someone can make this a little more robust or faster or I don't know. But it works. And um, that is that. Oh yeah, I set an intentional 128K uh, byte file transfer limit because if you're going to transfer more than 128K at 771 bits a second, uh, I, don't know, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Um, all right, so some details about the bootloader and the debug and the Freescale BDM. Um, the debug port uh, is a USB HID CDC class, a communications device class. Uh, standard, um, sort of like a, a, almost like a USB serial port, uh, slightly different, so you need a special driver for it instead of like the standard FTDI driver that you see a lot for devices. Um, that driver is on the DEF CON CD. If you load that, you'll then get a virtual COM port. You can go into hyperterminal or Zterm or whatever and um, hook up your USB device and maybe see some debug messages. I forget what I left there, so I don't know. But I, I would have kept it secret except for the fact that you need a driver, so I didn't want to be too mean. Um, the bootloader, the driver I think is installed when you install the bootloader GUI installer 1.1 and then you should be set to go. You plug your badge in, you compile your code, you load your S19 record into the bootloader and you load it up through the USB port. So that's cool. Um, and then I mentioned this earlier, the Freescale BDM. I have one multi-link cable that will be up in the, uh, in the hardware hacking village and the Freescale guy might bring some stuff. So if you totally bone your device and like erase the bootloader and totally mess things up, we can use the other six pin header on the other side to uh, reload everything. Um, one thing that was cool is I wanted a way to have the badge run at, with as low power as possible when there was no USB connected because most, of, most people here probably won't attach the USB. So normally it's running at 12 megahertz and that's fast enough to do, to do the SD card. It's actually well beyond what needed to be done to do the SD card and all of the uh, functionality, but I liked it. Um, and it's also a, a multiple of 48, which is what we need for, or 
of, uh, which is what we need for USB. So USB has to run at 48 megahertz in order for the USB module inside the part to run. So when the USB is plugged in, the system automatically clocks up to 48 megahertz. I thought that was cool. All right, so now the problems. All the technical stuff worked fine this year. Last year was like a total pain in the ass and we had all sorts of problems. This year it went fairly, fairly smoothly. Um, I got approval from, uh, from DT July 11th on the firmware and uh, the badges had already been fabricated at that point. So we were pretty, pretty well along. Um, parts procurement was a big problem. Trying to find 8,500 of anything is hard. Uh, especially when you need stuff right away and there's a lot of people that are coming to a conference on a date that isn't going to change. Um, I don't know how, how stressed out you guys get about stuff like this, but I was really stressed out about it. Um, so, I used DigiKey for as many parts as I could just to get them in hand as quickly as possible. So basically, if DigiKey didn't have it in stock, uh, I tried not to order the part and I'd redesign with another part. So most of the stuff we got early enough. That was fine. Um, two parts that didn't show up right away were the SD card socket and uh, the programmed microprocessors which are sort of important for a badge. And I'll get to that in the next few slides. Um, some delays in customs as well. I talk about this. They, they get a big thumbs down for me so I'll get into that. But they held some of our stuff for five weeks and um, we were about this close to setting up a goon assembly line to hand solder the rest of the parts that uh, didn't arrive in time in China. Or we were actually going to have you guys do it <laughs> as you got your badge. So pretty much, I mean, no matter how much you plan in advance, um, there's always going to be problems. And yeah, this year we didn't plan a, a, as much in advance as we could have, which is why next year we're going to try. But next year there's going to be a different problem. I don't know what it's going to be, but there will be one. I can guarantee that. So the Lamer of the Year Award. This is a new award that I've designed. And um, someone's going to get it every year. And, and this year we have three people that just sucked. Um, the first one was 3M. These guys, we needed their secure digital socket. It was half the price of anybody else. Um, DigiKey had a little bit of stock, but they promised that they'd work with the manufacturer, they'd work with 3M, get everything we needed in six weeks. And I ordered these in May, so it was like, oh, cool, six weeks, that's like plenty of time. So that will be mid-June mid or the end of June, and there'll be a month to manufacture the badges. Um, and the manufacturer even said, yeah, six weeks, guaranteed, no problem, piece of cake. Uh, as soon as we placed the order, they said, oh, no, it's actually going to be like eight to ten weeks. And I'm like, oh, man, eight to ten weeks. But I, I looked on the schedule and I talked to the factory who's manufacturing the badges. And I'm like, yeah, I guess that's okay. You know, it's going to be close, but we can do it. So eight to ten weeks pass. I'm sitting there with my thumb up my ass thinking everything's going to be fine. And I get a phone call on July 16th. And they say, the, badges, or the uh, sockets aren't done. And I said, why? And they said, I don't know. <laughs> and July 18th came. And they called me and said, the badges are going to ship tomorrow. I said, or the sockets are going to ship tomorrow. I'm like, great. The next day, the badges haven't shipped. Why? I don't know. So there's this whole just miscommunication of, uh, I don't even know what happened, but they say the order got lost. And I don't know how you lose an 8,500 piece, like if it's 83 cents, what's that, like a $6,000 order for SD card sockets. I don't know how you lose something like that. But apparently they did, or at least that's what they say. And I'm going to find out later and maybe... Maybe next year I'll talk about what actually happened when I find out. But um, so eventually they call up and say, okay, we, we figured out the problem. The order got lost. We're going to have the, the parts for you on August 8th. <laughs> What's today? <laughs> yeah, it's August 8th, right? Okay. So uh, that, that didn't work. And oh, by the way, while all of this was going on, I was at a firefighter training facility in the middle of Modesto, California, which was like 110 degrees in firefighter gear on the phone with DigiKey and 3M trying to get parts. It was just really strange. Um, so anyways, spent a week just being a dick on the phone. And uh, the global product manager, the guy that is in charge of global products, <laughs> globally, <laughs> um, called me up and said, I got it handled. I'll get the parts to you right away. And, and apparently they had the stock sitting somewhere in Singapore uh, and just never sent it out. <laughs> so we got all the parts 10 days before DEF CON. That's pretty close, but... That's nothing, as you'll see. Lamer of the Year Award number two. I put Force Electronics, but I actually think it's Source Electronics. I don't know if the, uh, if the, if the vendor was trying to mislead me with their name. So it might be Source. Uh, but these guys were selected to program the microprocessors. 
Um, I don't remember if I mentioned it last year, but we had a little bit of a problem programming the parts last year because no programming house in the United States had the proper socket to program the part. And without programmed parts, we'd have no flashy lights. Um, so I talked with Freescale and I talked with Future Electronics, the guys that I, that I was using to buy the parts through, and said, you know, we have to avoid this problem. They're like, yeah, 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 we'll avoid the problem. We'll have all the parts programmed, you know, well in advance, no problem. Freescale sent all the parts to Future w weeks in advance. So they were sitting there. As soon as I approved the firmware, we kicked off the programming process. And uh, they're like, yeah, five days, no problem. It's, you know, it's not that many parts. They do it in a, in a gang programmer anyway. So five days goes by and um, nothing shipped. So I call up and say, why didn't anything ship? And um, someone said, oh yeah, there's some bad parts that didn't program. So I'm like, why didn't you ship the rest? And they said, I don't know. <laughs> so I um, had to make a lot of phone calls and talk to a lot of people and made them ship at least the 6,000 parts that they had programmed right away. And then there was a balance that they had to program, so they sent those. But they sent those to the wrong address. They sent them to me at my house. <laughs> instead of to the factory where they were supposed to go. And I, I don't know what I could do with that many parts. So that took another few days to get that figured out. And it turns out they shipped everything except 45 pieces which were bad. Um, 10 days before DEF CON. And at that point we're like, oh my god, we're so screwed, we only have 10 days to man manufacture 8500 badges. But it gets worse. The, uh, the, 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 the biggest lamer of the year award, number three, goes to Chinese Customs. Um, if, I think the Olympics start today, and apparently that was a really big problem for shipping stuff into China and getting stuff out of China. Everything was being looked at. Um, and when you're sending $50,000 worth of parts through China, they want their tax. They want to get paid. And um, we didn't necessarily want to pay it. We had one box that was stuck in custody since June 30th. It's been like five weeks already with two key parts, the infrared transmitter and the infrared receiver. That's sort of like the whole point of the badge. Um, and of course, no one told me that it was stuck in customs until uh, July 28th. I don't, I don't know why, but it's like, oh yeah, all the other parts are in. Yeah, we got the SD card sockets and we got the program parts. Oh, by the way, we're missing a box that's in customs. Um, so that was stuck in custody. We couldn't get that through. So I placed another DigiKey order and tried to send that directly to China. That one got stuck. They wanted like $7,000. Oh no, $1,000 in tax. Um, so we didn't pay for that one. That's still in customs. <laughs> and I sent another box from DigiKey with the same parts. Luckily they had enough stock um, to eTechNet in the US, who is our manufacturer. And um, they cut it all up into smaller pieces and sent it in all sorts of smaller boxes to try to sneak it through customs. <laughs> and um, Monday morning, or actually, it was Monday morning China time, Sunday morning our time during uh, Black Hat. Press reload on my tracking numbers, which I've been doing all week. And magically, they passed through customs. We fooled them. And uh, <laughs> eTechNet now had all parts four days before DEF CON. <laughs> so the past few weeks have just sucked. Um, anyway, so. Starting Monday, the manufacturing's been going pretty good. They had a few technical problems that we were able to work out, and that's why badges are coming in in small batches because there's people there that are still manufacturing them and still testing them and sending them over. But at this point right now, all the badges, 8,500 of them, except for the 16 that I took for myself and sent home, um, are all in the air coming from China. And like w w what Dark Tangent said, a few 3,700 something are coming today, and then another 2,000 are coming tomorrow. And as far as I know, everything is past customs coming in, so that's good. And I'm happy. And I can sleep now. <laughs> Yay. So don't hate me because of that, now that you know the story. I felt really bad seeing all these green cardboard badges everywhere. Um, all right, so this is just some pictures of the parts that came in. There was a lot of parts, and they were all shipped to my house first. And then I had to repackage them and send, send them out. Um, that's my front door with all those DigiKey boxes. Like you could hardly get in the gate. But I thought that was a fun picture. There's a, um, okay, so the badges, they work, they could be manufactured, um, but I needed a way to make sure that they are tested. Um, and put together a little test procedure, something really simple, uh, that's basically a basic stamp that has an infrared receiver. When you turn on the DEF CON badge, it sends the Sony TV power off command a few times. 
And what this test unit does is just captures that, make sure that it's receiving the data properly, turns a green light on. That way the people at the factory can just run this thing and say, okay, the badge works, the badge works, the badge works. Um, they don't test the SD card interface because it's just an SD card interface and the lines go from the socket directly to the part. Um, but this is just a pretty basic test. The, uh, all of the parts for this, the components, um, lost and, yeah. Oh, it's in the vendor area. Okay, there are 80 sets of components if you want to put together your own little test unit and use your badge to control things because there's also a little MOSFET transistor circuit in there so you can have it receive your infrared code and turn on something or open a door or lock somebody out of something. Um, so I don't know. It's kind of neat. Here's a little test procedure video. Um, put the battery in, watch it transmit, and the LED turns green and that's it. Um, so number of badges, every year we're making more and more. The first year 6,500 badges, last year 6,800, this year 8,500. That's a lot of hackers and that's really cool. Um, hopefully it's all hackers and not just like more feds have come. <laughs> but I like you guys too as long as I can like get, I can spot you and get your shirt. Um, so we did all these different types, different solder mask colors, different silk screen colors, 7,500 human. Uh, it's just a lot of badges. Here's what they all look like. Uh, human, let's see the order is human, speaker, vendor, contest. Then the bottom row is uh, press, goon, staff, Uber. This one. The only one that exists right now until you guys win some contests. And there's the backside. Um, it took about 200 hours this year versus 170 hours last year of development time. That doesn't include the, all of the time afterwards dealing with the supply chain stuff, dealing with the factory, dealing with the problems, dealing with FedEx. Um, but the, the, the technical part of things, um, 160 hours of engineering and then the rest of meetings and writing and stuff. So I don't know. I thought that would be cool to visualize that to actually show how much work went into it. It was a lot. It was all nights and weekends too. Uh, and badge hacking contest. Again, we're doing it. Um, I leaked some information on the DEF CON forums a few weeks ago about the badge, about the development environment. Uh, Wired.com leaked some information on Tuesday about the badge. There is no excuse um, for not being ready for the badge hacking contest. We have some cool prizes that aren't being given out anywhere else, uh, including cool t-shirts like this. And um, let's see, you can get everything you need on the DEF CON CD. Submissions are due 2 p.m. at the Hardware Hacking Village, which is in a skybox. I'll be floating around all day, um, all weekend if you have questions. Uh, the guy from Freescale is going to be there to support you guys. And we'll have, we'll have some soldering irons and some other things set up. If you want an idea about what people have done for previous badge hacking contests, if you haven't been here, uh, take a look at, at the two links on the left side um, on my website. So... Yeah, the, even though I'm up here giving this talk, this obviously didn't happen in a vacuum like any, pretty much anything else, you need to work with other people. Um, and in this case, there was a few people that saved my ass and really helped out with getting this thing done. Freescale, obviously, for giving us the processors and the support we needed. Um, E-TechNet, our manufacturer that made DEF CON 14 and 15 badges. Just the stuff they're doing is insane. Unbelievable. And they don't complain about it. Um, and then Keely, my wife, who now you all know, um, is at home creating our uh, backup unit <laughs> due September 25th, 2008. So we'll have a... <laughs> Thank you. So we'll have another hacker in the family. And then, of course, the DT Ping KS, who uh, happens to speak Chinese very well and talk to the factory every night, which is good. Vertigo and Lost and, and everyone else pretty much at Black Hat and DEF CON for having to deal with this problem and doing it in a way that seems to be graceful and, and not piss too many people off. So um, that's it. Uh, let's see. I have like a few minutes, so I'm going to talk about one thing that I'm doing. If you look on the back of the badge, you see a little Kingpin logo, kingpinempire.com. I've started an apparel line for a number of reasons, but primarily it's to raise awareness of the hacker community, to kind of spread the word to the masses about what's going on. Um, and all of the proceeds of stuff that I sell, uh, a portion of that goes to various charities like the ACLU, like the EFF, 
health-related charities, things that have helped me and my friends stay out of trouble um, and stay alive and, you know, really support the hacker community and the next generation of people who are getting involved in the hacker scene, um, make sure that people stay out of jail and can continue to do what we do. So kingpinempire.com, everything's out of stock right now, but I have a few shirts and shirts and hats and stuff just so you walk around and people are like, oh, that's cool, kingpin, yeah. What is it? What, what's a hacker? And then you can go and, you know, explain it and stuff because that's really, we need to educate everybody who's not in this room pretty much doesn't know what a hacker is. So we need to explain that to them. And uh, I think giving back to the community is very important and I've spent my entire life in this community. So I want to make sure now that I have an opportunity to, to give back and make sure Grifter's son is going to stay out of jail and can be a hacker. Make sure my son can stay out of jail and be a hacker. So that's what I'm doing. You can check out the website if you want. Um, and uh, I guess that's it. So I'll see you guys on Sunday with some uh, badge hacking results. Thank you.